folks, welcome, 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 welcome out there. This is Ernie Roberts, that's who I am anyway, and I am here to take you through a great afternoon of TN Learn MathLine Summer School style. We hope you're having a good day. Hope you, thank you for tuning in this afternoon, and we hope that you will sit back, relax. We're going to do some math here in just a minute. Get those pencils, get some papers, and get you just a little handheld calculator. Doesn't have to graph or anything. Uh, we're just going to do some percents today, I believe, if I'm not right. Guys, let's see if that confirms my prediction. What do we got coming up here on the slate here? Uh, yeah, we're going to shoot for 100%. <laughs> so guess what? We're going to be dealing with percents today. And the problem is not just necessarily finding a percent, but also the parts, the base, all those good things that we look for within a percent problem and a situation depending, of course, on what is the problem telling us to do. So let's take a look at what examples we're looking at. Starting, first of all, we're going to ask a simple question. What is 45% of 300? Now, a couple of ways we look at percent problems. Some are simple equations, some are a simple proportion. It's simple. That's what I want you to understand. Percent should not be one of those things that you get hung up over and you go, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to do these. It's really, really a very simple setup. And we're going to go to, first of all, this nice proportion setup that I really, really like. So let's go with a proportion which, folks, is comparing two ratios. Or in this case, we'll look at it as two fractions that are equal to each other, all right? And I'm going to just give you kind of a simple formula. And the reason I like this formula, I like using this approach, is you just simply fill in the words with the pieces that you need. Now, the part is basically, in this case, is what we're looking for, all right? What's the part? Looks like a port there, but it's a part, all right? And then we would have underneath that, we would have our base. And then over here, we're going to put the percent, and we're going to put it over 100, because that's another way of looking at 45%. It's just like saying 45 divided by 100. So this completes the proportion, by the way, percent's always going to go over 100. So when you see this little symbol right there, that's where it's going, all right? Then the hard part is maybe figuring out which is which here. Now, the base usually, and not always, not 100% of the time, but in a word problem setting, usually it's going to be following the word of, all right? And of is your base. That's where we start. And I like to call it the starting point. And what is 45% of 300? You're going to start with 300, and you're going to find out what is 45% of that. So you're looking at a part. Now, let me be very careful with you on this thing, calling us a part. It can also be larger. If this is more than 100%, that means the part is going to be bigger than your base. It's going to be more than you started out with, like you have earned 135% of what you expected to earn. Folks, it's going to be bigger, all right? It's going to be more. If you spent 35% of it, or in this case, 45% of what you were hoping to earn, eh, not so good, not so good, all right? So let's see what happens with our numbers here. If 300 is going into the denominator over here. I'm going to just call this N, all right? I'm going to leave it as a number. I don't know what it is yet. We're going to figure that out. And over here, over here, we're going to make 45. That's simply what our percent is. And we're going to slip slide it over 100, all right? Now, a couple of ways we could look at this. And most people don't really catch these as much as we used to, maybe in, in earlier days of mathematics and teaching and such. But notice there is a little relationship going on here. If you take 100 times 3, you get 300. So that senses and tells me, hmm, maybe I want to do 45 times 3, and that'll get me there. We're going to sort of go that route, all right? We're going to sort of look at it being that approach, all right? And uh, in working with this, I'm going to go with the cross multiply. Now, when we cross multiply, we simply take... These two guys, we call them the extremes. We multiply them together. That'd be 100 times n. And then we look on the other side. These are called the means. They're in the middle, basically, if you're looking at 1, 2, 3, 4 here. And uh, the 300 times 45, that's the product of the means. So when we cross multiply, we pick it up going this way, which is going to be 100n. We're just going to say that because that's what that means by times n, all right? And on the other side, we're going to go this way. And we're going to take 45 times 300. Now, these numbers get kind of big, so we're going to play with the calculator somewhat here on these, and we're going to solve this out. So let's go ahead and multiply our 45 times 300. Do the calculator on that. Take to your calculator. By the way, you don't have to have a graphing calculator to do this part. This is just a simple multiplication, all right? Anybody's calculator that's worth a grain of salt or $5 is going to probably be able to do this one, all right? And you get 13,500. So when we look back here at our little paper situation, we've got 100N equals 13,000 
and a 500, all right? So there's a rather big number. Some of you are going, oh, it's going 13,500. No, no, we got to still divide by 100. We still got to divide by 100. The beauty of dividing by 100, the beauty of dividing by 100 to both sides here, remember we're going to do it to the right, we got to do it to the left, and vice versa, left and right, go together the same precedent. The 100s obviously are going to cancel us out here. Now the beauty of, again, I was about to say, beauty of dealing with dividing by 100, it's about the decimal moving. Right now the decimal sitting right there, and you're going to move it in two places, and you know what you're going to get? You're going to get 135. That's the part. That's the part. So in other words, 135 out of 300 is 45%, which makes sense, which makes sense, should make sense. Now, when we look at these problems, I want you to notice something here. Another way that we could have done this, we could have changed that 45 to a decimal, not the proportion. No, no, no. The proportion, you always just put it in. There's no decimals in the proportion, unless there's some craziness going on up here, and, and we're going to address that here in just a moment, but not in this problem. But what we could do, what we could also do is basically say the part is equal to the percent, and we'll change the percent, times the base. That's another way to do it. Now notice we changed that percent to a decimal, moving two decimal places. So basically what we did, we moved the decimal place to here rather than doing it two places down here. All right. So you, you get the same answer. We're going to put the same numbers in here. I'm going to show you. P equals, you're going to take 45 hundredths times that 300. And just for all of you non-believers, I know yeah, all of you believe what I say, right? Let's see if we take a decimal version, 45 hundredths, and we multiply that times our 300, will we get the same value? In other words, will we get 135? Yes, we do. Just saves a step. But both ways are quite doable. And they're both going to give you the same answer. When we come up with our final part here, it is equal to 135. Notice we got the same value either place. So when you're dealing with these percent problems, I want you to realize there's more than one way to go. More than one way to go. I like the proportion because it's always going to be set up the same way. I like the equation. It's going to be set up the same way. And if you will keep going to that, you're going to know when you multiply, when you divide. That's the biggest question mark. And as so many people ask me, adults, young people, people ask, Ernie, how do you find a percent? Or how do you find a number if you know a percent and a total? Or how do you find the number you're trying to find the percent of? You know, all those things, they're all based on formula. It's all based on those two little formulas right there. Fill in what you know, leave out what you're missing, do some arithmetic. Let's see what our next problem is going to do for us, all right? This next time I mentioned something to illusion to watch out for decimals. This one you got to keep if we're going to use the proportion approach, all right? So here we go. We're going to keep that 37 and a half. All right, there we go. And we're going to put it over 100. There's our percent. We always put that over 100 immediately. Notice the 240 is following your lovely of. So let's put it right in there. Notice there's no movement of the decimal when we just plug it in because we're putting that value over 100. So leave it, leave it in there, all right? Here's what we're looking for. Call it in. We'll call it in. Again, lovely situation here. We've got 100 in equaling to, we're going to put it, 240 times 37, that's 0.5. So that's times, there's your 37 and a half. Again, some of you guys are worried, where'd you get that? Again, we cross multiply. That's how we got the 100 in. This is where we picked up 240 times 37 and a half. So what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and go to the calculator on this one because those are some pretty heavy multiplications. We'd spend the rest of the show if we didn't. So, and we really don't want to do that today, do we, folks? No, we want to move on, get some good stuff here. Got some great problems lined up for you all. Let's see what happens when we multiply 240 times 37 and one half. I get 9,000. Well, that's pretty nice. That's pretty nice. So we've got 100 divided times n. We've got 100 times n equaling over here, it says 2. 9,000. And you know what we're going to do? What we're going to do is we're going to simply take and we're going to divide by the 100. And remember what I said was so cool about dividing by 100 is you're just moving the decimal in two places. So it looks like our hundreds are going to go away. We're going to lose these zeros. Hey, that's another way you can look at it. Just zeros just cancel each other out there. And you're going to end up with n equals to 90. N equals to 90. So that is your value up there. Now, a minute ago, I showed you another way to do it. Let's look at that part to equal. 
the percent. And remember, we change it to a decimal. Now, folks, when we change 37 and a half or 37 and 5 tenths, got to move that decimal two places. So this is going to be taking th 375 thousandths. Notice that decimal has moved out to the front. All right. And we're going to multiply it by that 240. And I'm going to tell you right off the bat here on the calculator, it's going to give us 90. Those of you who don't believe me, hey, here we go. Let's put it on the calculator. Let's see if you buy me now. Let's see. There it is, 375 thousandths. Let's multiply that by 240. And you know what? We have 90, just as I promised you. So again, it's a multiplication, and we do end up with 90 both ways. Great approach, all right? And again, you simply percent, or you, excuse me, part equals percent of your total, okay? So in other words, take the percent times the total, it equals your part. Nice and sweet, easy arithmetic. Just be sure you change it to decimal, otherwise you're gonna have some big totals there. Really, really big totals. Let's take a look at our next one here. It's got a decimal situation also. It says, basically it's one half a percent, all right? It's not 5%, and I get nervous when we say 0.5%, although you'll hear that all over when you're talking about, that could be an interest rate on your bank right there, folks. It's a little scary, but it's true. And people going, okay, does that mean 50%? Does that 5%? It's actually one half percent, all right? So let's go back to our little, little thing here where we put part over base, sometimes called the total, and we're gonna say it's percent of 100, over 100, all right? So we're gonna put that decimal right there. Don't move it yet, it's not moving yet. Put it over 100, that's basically one half of a percent, all right? And that's how we do it, basically a half over 100 right there, 5 tenths. Now, on the other little side, we have, again, it's following the word of. So we're going to put our 25 down there in the bottom, 28 down there in the bottom, thank you. And we're going to put an N right there in the numerator, all right? So again, we're looking for the part. We've got our base. We've got a percent, albeit very, very small. It's going to give us something. Let's see what we come up with, all right? Let's go ahead and cross multiply. Let's take our extremes together. We'll get 100 in. And over here, multiply those two guys together. And let's take that on the calculator. I think we could probably figure it out, but let's go ahead and hit the calculator, save some time. Okay, let me clear that out first. Clear it out. So we got 28 times. We'll take a half. A half of uh, 28 should be 14, but we'll just make sure we see that it does that. Hey, there it is, good. So you say, Ernie, that's not pretty. We're dividing 100 into 14, and right there is the decimal. Remember what we said a minute ago? That decimal is going to shift in. So we're going to move it two places. So this is a very, very small amount here, folks. It's going to be ooh, 14 hundredths, okay? 14 hundredths. Now, let's check it out with our other little formula. We've got the part equaling the percent of your base, all right? So let me put that down just a little bit. And we're going to change that decimal. You know what we're going to change that decimal to? Don't put, don't you dare put it as it is. We've got to change, move that thing two places to the left. So we're going to move that 0.5 right there. We're going to move it two places to the left. We said, Ernie, there's no place to move. That's right. That's why we're going to put in two zeros with that 5. All right. Then we will multiply it by your 28. And you know what? I guarantee you. Let's put it on the calculator and see where we go. We get whew, five thousandths with a thaw on the end of it, folks, times, what was it, 28. We want to come up with 14 hundredths. It does it. It does it great for us, all right? So there again, be careful with those decimals. When you see a decimal in that percent, it's easy to just say, Oh, it's as it is, or I add a zero, or do, you know, no. You, you, you're constantly changing to a decimal. you got to move it two, count them, one, two decimal places, all right? So be sure, be sure you take advantage and do it right, okay? Let's take a look at our next problem here, all right? It says, what percent of 48 is 30? Notice this time we do not know the percent. We do not know the percent. So we're going back to our little proportion formula here. Folks, the N is right there. We do not know what it is, all right? And underneath it, we do know we are going to divide by 100, all right? So that's going to give us a nice percent here in just a second, all right? Now, where do we put the 30 and the 
48. Remember I said usually the word of is a very good indicator of the base, the total part that we're looking for, where our starting point is, and that's where we're going to start is at 48. Right there it goes. Up above, the only place left to go is that's the part, follows the word is. So that gives us 30 there. Cross multiplying. Now you say, Ernie, this one doesn't look quite so easy to cross multiply because we're not going to get 100 in. Well, we're going to go ahead and multiply this 48 times in, and we're going to get 48 in. That part is easy. Look over here, my friends. We got 30 times 100. Hey, everybody out there with me? How many zeros? There are one, two, three of them when you cross multiply those. Don't, don't, don't divide out the zeros. We're going to keep them all. This time we're going to say 30 times 100. I'm going to go ahead and put that down there just so everybody knows where it's coming from. Y'all writing it down at home too, I hope. So here we go. We got 48 times this value in equaling to 3,000. Now it is time to divide by 48. Will it come out even? I don't know. We'll find out. Um, let's divide both sides by 48 and see what we come up with here. All right. Let me clear out what we have. And let's take 3,000. And this time, notice we are dividing by. All right. So don't multiply. You'll definitely get a rad answer. Let's go with 48, and let's see what craziness we have. We have 62 and a half, okay? So that is 62 and a half, and I'm going to go ahead and put the percent on there. That's what that is. It's a percent, all right? So be careful. That's the only time we put a percent, by the way. I have students a lot of times in any of these problems, they decide everything's got to have a percent on it. No, only if you're looking for the percent, all right? Looking at our other approach, how about it? P equals, let's put that percent times our base. See what we know. All right. This time we know the part is 30. I'm going to call this N. And we know our base over there is 48. All right. We're going to get N by itself. So we're going to have to divide by 48. And we're going to take 30. Clear out what we had. We're going to take 30. And we're going to divide by 48. And we get this, looks like 625, what is that, thousands, all right? Now, be careful. Be careful with that. You say, what does that mean? That means we've got to move that percent. We've got, to, we've got to move that percent the other way. So we're going to make it 62. You got it. It's going to give us right here, this is going to give us N equals 60. To 606, we'll try this again, 625 thousandths, which as a percent will give us 62 and a half percent. So you got to remember that decimal will shift in this situation here because you basically, again, you're giving, you're getting the decimal form here of it. All right. And remember with the percent, got to work with that. Got to work with that. All right. Let's take one more quick practice here on this one. This one says what percent is six of 60 is 45. So again, I hope we're getting in the practice. We are looking for percent, folks. We're looking for the percent, right? We're looking for the percent. So we'll put it in over 100. And, ooh, is 45 of 60? All right, so 60 goes down here in the base. Is goes with your part. And there you go. Now, again, let me caution you. It's not because 45 is smaller than 60 that it goes on the top, okay? It's just the words of and is. This is your starting point. This is where you're going to finish. We're trying to figure out what did we do in the middle, all right? What percent did we throw in there to make this happen? So let us look at it. By the way, some of you are going like, Ernie, could we reduce that fraction and make it look a little easier? We certainly could. But let's go ahead and use our process here. Let's go ahead and do the cross multiplications. And again, we're going to play this out. See what happens. See what happens. We're going to get 60 times n on one side. We got 45 times 100. Well, everybody can do that, right? What's 40 times 100? Add two zeros to the 45. You've got it, 4,500. That's what makes mental math wonderful, folks, that you can do this divide by 100 or multiply by 100. It's all a matter of shifting a decimal, all right? So basically, this shifted two places to the right because we added two zeros, all right? Now, let's divide that and see what we get. Calculator time here. What we got? 4,500 Divided by, we'll clear out what we had originally. Thank you. Sometimes I forget to do that. Let's go with 4,500. Don't want to get you confused out there, folks. And uh, we're going to divide by 
60 it looks like. I'm hoping it'll come out even. It was nice earlier. We did have that last one came out pretty nice. Uh, we got 75% on this one. So N is equal to our 75% there. That's our story on this one. So this one came out fairly nice and even. No, no decimals coming into play here. What would happen if I did the other way? Well, let's see. I would start off with 45. And that would equal, I don't know what the percent is. We'll call it N. And uh, we would end up with uh, coming out with 60 times that. Again, we're going to divide by 60 to both sides. And I'll go ahead and tell you, when these 60s cancel out over here, this is going to give us a decimal 75 hundredths. Now remember, we want to get the percent, so we've got to move that decimal back to the right two places. That'll give us the 75 percent. And once again, the answer to check out. Answer to check out. All right. So we've gotten it to the point where we can find a percent. We've found the part. Let's go for the base. Let's see if we can figure out a problem here with the base. All right. First problem here says 75 is 40 percent of what number? All right. Doing this in your head is a little bit more difficult to wrap around. All right, it's harder to wrap around this problem and say, oh, I see an answer, I see a number. But what we're going to go with here is we're going to still set up our proportion and we're going to play with our multiplication and division. So this time 40 is going over 100 because that's the percent. That's always the easy part. You always get the percent over 100. From there, the key word of what number, there's your starting point. You don't have that. All right, you've got your finish. 75 is where we finished. There's the is to tell us that more stuff's going to happen. Then we're looking for our n down here. All right. So let's do some cross multiplication here. See what happens. See what happens. And I believe we're going to get 7,500. You know why? Because it's easy to multiply by 100. And on the other side, how about it? We're going to get 40 n. Once again, we did 75 times 100. And that gave us a 7,500. Now, it's division time. Let's see, clear out what I've got here. All right, how about it? 7,500, and we're going to divide it by 40. And see what we get. That's probably why it didn't, uh, oops, that's a, oops, let's try that again. Clear that. We want 7,500, folks, 7,500. Let's go with that. There's definitely one I couldn't wrap around my little brain there. Uh, we'll divide that by 40. Much better, much better, much better. There we go. So our number there, yeah, this is one I wouldn't have wrapped around either, is going to be 187 and a little chump change, a one-half attached to that, all right? Now, you say, Ernie, how would we have done that on the other game over here? Well, we would have used our part equals the percent times the base. We're looking for the base, right? So here's what we'd have. We'd have the part at 75. Our percent is going to be, I'm going to put it as 4 tenths, because remember we changed it to a decimal, times some value, we'll call it n. Well, this one's really easy. We're going to divide 75 by that 4 tenths. By the way, we've already put everything where we need it, all right, in that situation. So we're going to take 75, we're going to divide it by 4 tenths. And see what we get? We get a syntax error. Okay, let's try again. I got a little carried away with the divisions. Let's try it again. <laughs> let's do it. 75, sorry about that, guys. 75 divided by 4 tenths. Yeah, watch out. Don't get over carried away with those divisions. They, they can get you. And we get the same value there. N is equal to 187 and 1 half. So there's your story, your basic story on making percents. You've got two options to work it. You can use the proportional method. Like I said, I felt the proportion, I like it best because I don't worry about do I shift things left or right with the decimal thing. I just basically work it out, that's the answer. Here you've got to remember, you've got to remember what to do with your percent. If I give you 40%, you've got to change it to a decimal in this approach. If you end up with a decimal and you're trying to find percent, you've got to change it back, all right? This one is foolproof with the proportion, the part over the base, percent over 100. If you can figure out which is which, and percent always goes over 100, you've got it made. It works great, all right? Hey, that's a little bit of introduction percents. We're going to play with them some more because, like I said, I want to make it seem simple to you, 
And I think when you do those proportions, it really is simple. Even when you do the decimals, it can be simple, as long as you remember and keep your rules in line. Speaking of which, you know, rules and stuff that we keep in line, we do have Facebook out there for you. www.facebook.com backward slash TNLearn. And you can always send us MathLine at TNLearn.org. Information, questions, comments, we'd love to hear from you. And you know what? We've also got... Uh, Hey, call us here uh, when we get back in live and such. But YouTube, you, we've got that going. We've got some of our problems of the day from the past, and we're going to be putting some of our shows up there. www.youtube.com backward slash TNLearn. So, and thank you for tuning in today. We hope you picked up a little bit about percents. We're going to apply them a little bit more this week. Don't miss out on it. You want to be a part of it. And you know what? We like having you here too.